Hi guys, Michael here with another Redshift tutorial. This week I'm going to be looking at the 360 degree camera which you can use to make 360 degree uh, images for VR and like the Facebook 360 video, uh, image viewer I think is another thing that you could use it on. I've not tried it with that but I'm going to show you how to look at it in VR um, as well as how to create it in Maya. So as you can see I've got a little scene set up here with just a couple of characters. Um, and the first thing we're going to want to do is create a new camera, which will be our 360 stereoscopic camera. So if you go to create cameras and just a regular camera will do the trick. And then we'll just position it in the scene wherever we want for just for now. On the attribute editor on the right, we'll scroll down until we get to the red shift drop down, which is just there. Um, we want to change the camera type to be stereospherical. Um, because you want a fisheye lens per eye so you get, pr uh, you get correct perspective distortion. Um, so the horizontal field of view is going to be 360 and the vertical is going to be 180. Um, so the way this works is um, with this particular image that I'm going to be setting up, the aspect ratio is going to be uh, 4 to 1. So it's going to be sort of like 4 times wider than it is tall. Um, and this is good for side by side 360 images. If you're doing a top and bottom image, um, you'd want to change this to be top and bottom. Or if you wanted to render the left eye and the right eye separately, you could do that as well. I'm going to do side by side because I know that works well with virtual desktop which is what I'll be using to uh, show you how the image looks in VR. Um, the uh, camera also has an option for separation and that's uh, actually uh, talking about the separation of the uh, distance between your eyes. I actually haven't used it and I've found that it's fine as is um, because an Oculus Rift has actually got uh, lens adjustment physically built into the the headset where you can adjust the separation of the lenses. I think it's probably best to keep it at s a zero but if you're finding it difficult to focus in the images that you're creating or they look a little bit squashed or wonky you might want to sort of play with that but um, at a value of zero I um, didn't have any problems. Okay so um, that's all there is to the setup. Uh, I actually I'll just quickly mention um, I don't enable focus either. Um, that's just going to uh, create a blurring effect outside of your focus region. I think it's best just to keep everything in focus. Um, your eyes will naturally uh, blur things out that, aren't, that you aren't looking at anyway. So uh, particularly for VR, I think this is probably the better way to do it. So uh, the next thing we need to do is set up the aspect ratio of our camera. So I'm going to hit space and go to my four panel display and then I'm going to change this top left panel to be, uh, actually no, I'm going to change this bottom left panel to be the camera one which I'm just going to, for the sake of it, change to VR camera. Um, and then I'm going to add the film gate in. And what we're going to want to do is set an aspect ratio of 4 to 1 um, for this image. And I'm going to make this a pretty high quality image as well. I'm going to make it 2000 by 8000. So let's go to render settings, uh, resolution, and let's just change the resolution to 8000 as our width and 2000 uh, yep, 2000 as our height, that's fine. So you'll see it's adjusting our normal perspective camera as well. Um, and then that's why I kept my overhead camera, so I can move the camera into place. Um, so if you look at this camera down here on the left, you'll see that there's not actually that much in focus. Um, and it's a little bit misleading, um, as it is actually re uh, rendering everything in a 360 degree circle around the camera. So think of the camera placement um, as where you are sitting in space. So if you want everything to look really big, lower the camera relative to the size of your models or whatever objects you have in the scene. Obviously raise if you want it to, uh, if you want to, you, you want the viewer to feel larger. Um, so if I put that there, that means we'll be roughly the same height as our models and we can look left and right at them. So you'll see in that display there, the 8000 by 2000 display, you can't see anything. So I'm just going to go into uh, the IPR editor and bring it up on the left here and show you what it renders out like. Alright, so you'll see the active uh, render on the left hand side there. Um, and c a couple of things to point out uh, that are useful to note is that you shouldn't have any um, X rotation on your camera. So um, I've got it set to negative 12 so it's currently looking down. It's best to have it looking straight ahead so if you set that to zero um, you see the update, the view update in the camera there, uh, in the IPR. 
Um, that's so you've got a nice horizon line um, in your images. Otherwise, the viewer is always going to feel a little bit off kilter um, if they don't have a nice horizon. It's just for the sake of um, no uh, non VR sickness. So um, I recommend keeping your X rotation at zero. Uh, y rotation doesn't really matter, um, and Z rotation you definitely want to keep at zero. You don't want their head tilted the entire time. Um, so you'll see in the image here, everything kind of looks small, but if you look at our camera from the above panel, um, you'll see that he uh, that we're situated pretty much in the middle of our characters, and that's pretty much what we, what we want. Um, I might move him a little bit closer to the right, so we get a, a nice distance between the two. And this will pretty much look correct in VR. You can see that we're just, if you look up from the side view, our camera is roughly at the top side of our character, so we're just seeing the tips of their heads. Um, so we'll roughly be standing about as tall as them, which is sort of what I want. So I'm going to uh, stop this IPR and save this image out now. Um, so we can just go to File, Save Image. I'm just going to save it on my desktop for easy access. And you can see I've already done a couple of tests. This can be 360 Final. And uh, JPEG's fine. Save that. Cool. And now let's jump into Virtual Desktop and have a look at our image. All right. So here you'll see Virtual Desktop. Um, these settings aren't super important. Um, I've just got it mirrored to the desktop so I can record this correctly. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into 360 Photos. And you'll see that one of the preview tests that I've done is already up there. Um, but I want to grab the um, new one that I just did off the desktop and drag it in. So you won't be able to see this on screen, but I'm doing that. And that's our new one, 360 final. So I'll just let that hide. And there you go. So that's at a resolution of um, 2,000 tall by 8,000 wide. So you get a pretty sharp image that way. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty good actually. Obviously, this isn't full 360. There's not a lot happening behind me, but I've got the two characters on my, uh, got a character on my left and a character on my right. That's pretty cool. Um, one thing to note, obviously, with 360 degree images, you can't get any closer to your image. It's not rendering a three 3D space. It's just mapping an image to a sphere around your body. Um, so. If I wanted to be able to get closer to these characters, I would have to do something like um, create the models um, and then export them from Maya into something like uh, Unreal Engine, which is actually quite good for VR, um, which I've done a very small amount of stuff, and maybe I'll do some more tutorials on that in the future. Um, and then, yeah, you could actually move around in the space, and you could, if you've got touch controllers like I just recently got, um, you could pick them up and throw them around and all that sort of stuff as well. So yeah, that's that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, just a quick tutorial this week um, because I'm in the process of setting up this new computer, so I don't quite have all my software um, installed, and I'm, I'm using a headset mic um, as opposed to my regular mic. So sorry about the audio if that's been a problem. Uh, but yeah, otherwise that's pretty much all. If you want to see more of this sort of stuff, uh, make sure you leave a comment and let me know. Um, if you like the video, make sure you click the like button. It will help other people find this tutorial. Um, and if you want to see more, make sure you're subscribed because I'm doing new tutorials every week. Um, I'm usually doing two a week. I think I'm making two a week this week. It's just been a little bit crazy with Christmas and New Year's. But look for a whole bunch of new tutorials in the new year. I'll be doing more Redshift because I love Redshift. It is so good um, and so fast. As you can see, I rendered out a 8000 by 2000 um, image basically on the fly while recording this. And like I said, new computer, I've beefed it up a little bit. But um, it's still pretty damn quick. So yeah, that's it for now though. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Happy rendering.